I didn't really hear you. How are you guys doing this morning? Those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Keith. I'm going to be up here preaching to you guys this morning. So if you've been with us for the past couple weeks, as I see a few of you haven't, we've been going through the book of Genesis. And so this week, so the past two weeks, we've been talking about Abraham and the story of Abraham. And today we're going to finish up and close out the story of Abraham. And if you were with us last week, Justin Tuulaulu was up here and he preached a lesson on Abraham. And one thing that I really got from that Jesus talked about was how easily we can lose our patience with God and want to take control. You know, because I can I can really relate to that. You know, there are many times in my life where I want to take control with I'm impatient and I'm impatient with God's plan and I just want to make things happen. That's fitting because one thing that we always need to remember is that God is in control. And that's what the title of my sermon this morning is today is that God is in control. Are you guys with me? You guys are silent. I need you guys to yell at me or something. Okay. So today we're going to be finishing up talking about Abraham's life. We're going to be talking about a few things and we're seeing a bunch of things from Abraham. Like a whole, he had a whole lot of patience. We're talking about that. We're talking about how he had a whole lot of trust and we're going to close up talking about how big God is. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's pray for the service. Dear God in heaven, just want to come before you this morning, God. Thank you so much for bringing us all here together to worship you, God. Thank you so much for being able to be up here to speak, God. I pray that you can be with each and every one of us. God, help us to be able to open our hearts, open our minds. God, help us to be able to learn something today that we can apply to our lives. God, that we can take some practicals away from this and that we can just be able to grow closer and stronger in our relationships with you. And God, I love you. I praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles, you can open it up to the book of Genesis. We'll be there in just a minute. We'll be in chapter 17. But the first thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is that if we want to follow God, if we want to be disciples or Christians, it takes a whole lot of patience. It takes a whole lot of patience being a disciple of Christ. But before we jump in, I have a question for you guys this morning. Who here likes waiting for stuff? No. No. <laughs> Who here likes waiting for something to happen? Waiting in line? Mm. Whatever it may be, I don't know. Well, if you're anything like me, the answer is probably no. You don't like waiting. I do not like waiting. There's something about waiting that the longer you wait the more angry you get. I'm a nurse at a clinic, and it's very true with the patients. The longer they wait, the more angry they get. And it's funny, because like a couple days ago, my wife and I went to Sam's Club. We were checking out, and it was closing time. And so they're calling on, you have 15 minutes, go check out. And so we go to the checkout, there's two lines. And we're like, you know what, we're smart. We're gonna choose the shorter line. (laughs) And so we get in the shorter line, And then there's the longer line over there. And we're just sitting there waiting. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. And then we see the other longer line. People who got in line after us coming through and walking behind us. We're like, dang it. Like, oh my goodness. And the longer you wait, the longer I waited, the more critical I became. Like, why do you need that much toilet paper? (laughs) And of course you chose all the shirts that didn't have the tags on them. Oh, you know, you get, I got so impatient, but you know, we made it out alive, amen. We got, we got through. My point is that it can be very difficult to be patient at times, even with just little things like waiting in a line at a grocery store. But when we turn to the Bible, we look at Abraham's situation. We see a man who had to wait a long time for what God had promised him. We'll pick it up in Genesis 17. We'll read 1 and 2 and then 15 through 19. It says, Then Abraham was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Then he goes on, he talks about the covenant of circumcision. Then in verse 15, it says, God also said to Abraham, as for your wife, Sarai, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be a mother of nations. 
Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down and he laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child for the, at the age of 90? That's crazy. And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting co covenant for his descendants after him. Wow. So Abraham was 99 years old when God reminded him what he was going to do with his generations. You know, imagine that waiting that long for something that, you know, you see all your relatives, all your friends getting. You know, God promised you that you were going to have a kid, but you don't have a kid. You're 100 years old, but all your friends have kids, grandkids, great-grandkids. What's going on? Imagine trying to be patient through that. That'd be so difficult. You know, and now you're thinking it's too late because your wife's 90 and that's physically impossible. Right? I'm a nurse. I know. It doesn't work out. You know, it's, it, and it says here that he even laughed because the idea of it was so crazy. He laughed and was like, is this actually going to happen? You know, but Abraham was patient. Abraham waited and waited and he waited some more. And, and when he was 100 years old, God finally gave him his son. We pick it up in Genesis 21, 1 through 7. It says, Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what had, he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him, Abraham gave, it the name, gave him the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh at me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. They were patient. They were insanely patient and God blessed them. God bless them with a son to create a nation. You know, I just think about this. Think about how long Abraham waited. And it makes me feel like the most impatient person ever. I couldn't wait in line for 15 minutes before getting critical, judgmental, and anxious. You know, let's turn to, if you have a Bible, turn to Psalm 37. You know, but I think this is one big problem in the world we live in today. I think we've forgotten how to wait. You know, we've forgotten how to be patient because we can have anything we want when we want it. You know, I want to go eat. I'm going to go eat right now. Go to McDonald's. I did that last night. It was a bad decision. <laughs> you know, we don't have to wait for nothing. You know, I can go get whatever I want whenever I want it. And it's caused us to become so impatient. And I think this easily translates into our relationships. You know... We expect people to change when we want them to. Because I get everything else when I want, you got to change when I want, right? No, we expect to have that boyfriend or girlfriend, that husband or wife when we want it. Because I get what I want when I want it. No, we expect to get that degree, that job, whatever it is, when we want it. And that's wrong. That's not how God calls us to live. God calls us to live patiently. And it talks about it here in Psalms. 37, 5 through 11. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, the, the, the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. You know, we're called to be patient, called to be still, to not worry, which can be extremely difficult at times. You know, but when we do, it talks about here, God will be there for us. He will bless us, it says here. 
You know, God will take care of us. And all we have to do is worry about him. All we have to do is focus on him. Like it talks about Matthew 6, 33 through 34. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. We just sang a song with this in it. It's really kind of funny. We don't got to worry. All we have to do is focus on God, turn to God, and he will be there for us. Amen? He will fulfill his promises like he did with Abraham. A few questions I have for you this morning is, how patient have you been lately? How patient have you been lately? Are you allowing yourself to be still? And are you letting God take control of your life? You know, being patient is so important. It's important for us. It's important for our relationships. Nobody likes being around someone who's impatient. Yeah. It's no fun. It makes everybody uncomfortable. And when we're patient, God will take care of us because God is in control. God is in control. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about regarding Abraham is trust. And along with trust comes faith. And before we jump into our next story, I have another question for you guys. Who here um, want, wanted something so bad, and then they finally got that something, and it didn't turn out to be what you had expected? All the time, time right? It, it happens pretty often, right? Things don't turn out the way we expected them to. I'm going to share a little bit about my life. Growing up, I always wanted to get married. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I glorified the idea of being married in my brain. Like, man, when I get married, my marriage is going to be perfect. <laughs> There's going to be nothing wrong. I'm going to be the most happy person ever all the time. Like, what could go wrong taking two people and making them one? I couldn't see anything going wrong with that. <laughs> you know, it's kind of... <laughs> and I, I met my beautiful wife Shailene here and uh, we decided to get married and it was amazing but goodness gracious did it turn out differently than I had expected <laughs> you know apparently when you get married you disagree a lot <laughs> what? <laughs> you know apparently you disagree a lot more than you thought you were going to disagree I think that reigns true for both of us right Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, I didn't even know that, that all this would happen. You know, there's so many more hardships, fights, and tough times than I thought. But I, I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't trade you for anything. Oh. Let's turn to Genesis 22. I think this is how God works, though. He sometimes decides to give us the things that we want so badly, the stuff that we want so badly, so that He can use them to turn us back to Him. So that he can use those things to turn us back to him. And he, we see that in the story of Abraham here. He gave Abraham what he wanted so badly. And he uses it to test him here. And we see in Genesis 22, 1 through 14. Sometime later, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in a distance. He said to his servants, stay over there with the donkey and I will go with the boy over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood from the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he, car and he, he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two men went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. 
He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Wow, this is a crazy story of trust and faith in God being in control. You know, God had given given Abraham what he wanted, what he had promised him. He gave him a son. And God challenged him on this. He called him to go and sacrifice his son. That's crazy. You know, if someone asked me, I don't have a son, but if someone asked me, hey, Keith, go ask your son, I'd be like, you're crazy, and I'm not going to hang out with you anymore, because that's weird. (laughs) You know, but this was God saying this. And talk about things not turning out the way he had expected them to. Things did not turn out the way the direction that Abraham wanted them to go. So what did he do? He didn't do what I would have done, which would have hidden Isaac in a safe place to never be harmed. No, he didn't do that. He listened to God and he obeyed him and trusted that God somehow, some way would work it out because God was in control. And I think there's two ways that we can respond when things don't work out the way we had hoped. You know, we can either turn towards ourselves, we can rely on ourselves, we can try to force it into being what we wanted it to be. We can be like, I worked for this. I deserve this. I made this happen. You know, or we could be like Abraham. We can trust in God. We can obey him and follow what God wants us to do. Turn all our efforts and strength towards him. If you have a Bible, you can turn it to Proverbs 3. You know, when I found out that marriage wasn't the way I thought it was going to be, I could have responded, you know, the first way I talked about, became angry, tried to make it the way I wanted it to be, make it fit it into that perfect little box I had made it, made for it. But if I had done that, my marriage would not look good. It would be based upon me. My marriage would be self-focused and not giving it all. And that's not really what I wanted. That's not really what I want. But when I point my marriage towards God, when I realize that marriage wasn't necessarily made for me to be happy, but for me to be holy, I can do amazing things with my wife. We can show hospitality to people. We can serve others. We can work through our problems really well and do amazing things for God. Amen? Ultimately, it's so much better when we are focused on God. And that's why we're called to trust in God, like it talks about in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. When we trust in God and when we point what he has given us towards him, when we realize he's really in control, he will be with us. And he will make our paths straight. And a straight path, for me at least, is usually a lot better than an unpredictable path. Amen? Amen. My question for you this morning is, are you trusting in God? Are you trusting in God? Do you trust that God has a plan for you? That he will take care of you, regardless of how things turn out or how they work out. This is is really difficult to do, especially when we want something so bad. When we want something to be a certain way. It's so important that we turn to God, that we trust in him like Abraham did when he was ready to give up his son. He was ready to give up his promise Because God asked him to do that. And I think Abraham did this because he saw that God was so much bigger than him. 
God's plan is so much bigger than him. And that he knew that there's some way God would work this out. And he was ready and willing to give up everything for God. That brings me to the last thing I want to talk about this morning is that God is so much bigger than us. God's plan is so much bigger than us. God's creation is so much bigger than us. And everything he is and does is so much more amazing. Let's turn to Genesis 25. And we can see this story of Abraham. God, God's plan was so much bigger than just Abraham. You know, Abraham was the start of the nation, but it didn't stop when Abraham passed away. God's plan was bigger than just him. And it kept on going through his son Isaac. We see that in Genesis 25, verse 7. Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last breath and died at a good old age. An old man full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in a cave at this place that the field, I'm not going to say it, the field Abraham had bought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who lived near Beer Lahai Roy. Sounds like a good place. <laughs> You know, we see that Abraham lived to be super old. He's 175 years old. That's crazy, but he still passed away. And the story still went on. God's plan still went on. God kept on going, and it says here that he moved on and he blessed Isaac. You know, I think we know in our heads that God is bigger than us. We are like, yeah, yeah, God's bigger than us. He created all this stuff. It's cool. That his plan is bigger than us. But when I think, when it comes down to it, it's so easy to make this life all about us, all about me, what I want to do. It's so easy to become selfish and live for ourselves, make choices that only benefit ourselves. You know, when I study the Bible with people, I always challenge them on one thing. Whenever they're going to make a decision or a choice, However big or small, I challenge them to filter that decision through the question, what would be the best choice for me spiritually? What would be the best choice for me spiritually? What would be the best decision for my walk with God? No matter how big or small the decision is, I think it's important to filter that through that question. Let's turn to James 4. You know, this is a really tough question to answer. Because a lot of the time, the best choice for me spiritually isn't necessarily what I want. The best choice for you spiritually doesn't always come with that job that you wanted so bad. The best choice for you spiritually doesn't always come with that boyfriend or girlfriend that you want so bad. That husband or wife that you want so bad. That degree that you want so badly. But the most important thing is that it does come with God. Amen. God is so much bigger than us. And a scripture that really reminds me of this is James 4, 13 through 15. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city and spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are but a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you have to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. We are but a mist, but God is forever. So we always need to be turning to God to be focusing on him and remembering that God is in control. Amen. In a few minutes here, we're going to be taking communion. And communion is a time to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made so that we could live, so that we could go to heaven. Jesus is the perfect example of all these things we talked about today. He's the perfect example of patience and how he's patient with us. Jesus trusted God and his plan, even when it involved him dying on a cross for our sins. And Jesus saw that God's plan was so much bigger than just him living that he decided to sacrifice himself for all of us. So as we take the little piece of bread and the little cup of juice this morning that represent the body and the blood of Jesus, 
Let's think about how we can follow Jesus' example and be patient in our lives. How we can trust in God's plan this week and really stand in awe of how amazing and big God is. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's pray for the body and blood of Jesus. Dear God in heaven, just want to come before you this morning, God, and thank you so much for sending your son to die on a cross for my sins, God, for our sins, so that we could go to heaven to be with you. God, I pray that we can respond to your grace, God, that we can be patient, that we can trust in you and really stand in awe of you and your creation. God, I pray that you can be with us and help us to really glorify you with everything that we have. God, I love you. I praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.